Hello everyone, I'm your host as always, Mr. Lin Lin. Rotational motion, affectionately known as rotmo, some find quite dizzying, while others say it's all Greek to me. For more, we go to our sports correspondent. Right, Mr. Lindley, many students trying to attempt any and all questions dealing with rotational motion frequently find it to look quite like the Greek language. Now I've done my homework on this one and I can confirm that that's because most of the symbols used are a part of the Greek alphabet. Who knew that weird looking T thing was actually a towel? Back to you. Thanks, and here we are with Rotmo. So many equations going on for Rotmo. Let's get those up there. Now, remember, fundamentally for us, what we had said was rotational motion is everything we had done up until that point in the school year, and now we're just like swapping new letters. Is there some new stuff? Yeah, that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But the rest of it is stuff we already know. So something about like rotational kinematics, go back and watch the kinematics video, right? Unit view kinematics. Check that out. It's fantastic. Featuring me. And what we're really doing is instead of having x, we have theta, and instead of having v, we have omega, right? But otherwise, fundamentally, it's the same thing. Now, will talk about those briefly, uh, theta being uh, ro uh, rotational position or like an angle, right? Omega being angular speed now, and alpha being uh, angular acceleration. I'd also reference you to your Rotmo cheat sheet from back in the day. But let's now talk about some of the differences, right? How, how are these units actually, how is Rotmo actually different from just, you know, taking our, our units and putting a different Greek letter in there instead of a, a normal thing? And, and one, you know, place to start, I think, uh, a good place for us to start here would be torque. Okay. Torque is a lot like a rotational force, but it certainly fundamentally is different. And one of our torque equations that we use on a regular basis is R perpendicular F. And that perpendicular, remember, is to remind us that the R value, the how far away the force is, needs to be perpendicular to force. So a common example would be, uh, what if I had an overhead view of a door? Okay. If I were to apply a force on that door, that force would cause this door to rotate and that will produce a torque. Now, if I want more torque, right, I can, I can change R, but I can also change F. And in this diagram, R would be from the axis of rotation to where the force is actually being applied. Now, where this got a little bit trickier for us in some of these questions and, and depending on what's going on, so if I had another door, if I were to apply a force uh, not perpendicularly, but instead if I were to apply a force like this at some angle, this is my force, what I'm going to actually have to do is now I'm going to break this force into components, which that's what we do with things at angles anyway. We break them into components. And like, you know, for this example, this might be something like Fx and this would be F why I would only want the piece that is actually perpendicular to my R value. And if we were to draw this, so R would be from here to here. So that's R. So I only want the part that's perpendicular. So I'd only want this component of the force there. And, you know, from this, we, we get some interesting things. So if I just uh, tack into this diagram, right? If I were to pull this way on the door completely outwards, uh, there is no force perpendicular. So that would not produce a torque. Okay. So this is a little bit where uh, how it differs. So it's not just that the force is acting on something, it's where the force is is acting. Now we want to try to bring this into, you know, getting a little bit closer to, to Newton's laws. But before we do, a uh, really important thing for us was uh, rotational inertia. Okay. Sometimes referred to as moment of inertia, but really rotational inertia is where we want to think about it. Remember, inertia is an object's tendency to resist changes in motion. Rotational inertia is an object's tendency to resist changes in rotational motion. But it's no longer just about mass. So remember, inertia fundamentally was just about mass. Rotational inertia is about mass and where it is. Now, the equation that you do not need to calculate this, is, but it is helpful for us to talk about this for a minute, uh, is really is the sum of mr squared. So it's about the mass, but it's also about where the mass is located. So if I, um, for instance, and it, it's also r is how you're spinning it. So if I have a stick, okay, and I spin the stick uh, dead center, right? So I'm spinning it around the center versus if I have a stick and maybe I'm, you know, rotating it like this, 
versus if I have a stick that I try to spin on the end and I try to spin it, you know, like this. It's much harder to rotate that stick that's on the edge, right? And the reason for that is the mass is now very far away. Even though these are two identical objects and they have the same overall mass, it's where that mass is. So it's a lot harder to spin that, and that's sort of our fundamental idea of rotational inertia. Now, why this is important to us is we think about we have, you know, F net, Ma Milof. Now what we have is net torque, right, is I alpha. So we care about that rotational inertia. Now for our, our torque problems, we could, just like we did in forces, have things in equilibrium, right, or we can have accelerated motion. And if we had equilibrium, analogous back in the day, up, down, left, right. Now uh, if we have equilibrium, I'm going to get that the counter clockwise torques would be equal to the clockwise torques is, is fundamentally how we would do that. And if we have it accelerating, you know, just like we, we did in, in the past, we could find that torque uh, by thinking about the, the way it's commonly done is we take the counterclockwise torques and subtract the clockwise torques. The reason we don't do accelerating minus resistive is a lot of times you don't understand which one's going to be accelerating resistive. Humans don't have a great, uh, you know, just in, inherent interpretation. Of, of what um, you know, rotational motion is and, and what it's it's going to be. You know, so this is how we're, we're finding torques, we're calculating torques. Um, it, you know, it, it's very very similar to how we would find net force and how we would find forces. You know, and you know, think back back to problems like uh, you know Britney Spears on the diving board, right? Ricky Bobby too, um, and then you know things like the the tray and, and the food and, and those sort of examples to to look at the difference between equilibrium and then um, what happens when we sort of change that. But now let, let's take this a step further. So how else uh, does this get different? And the other sort of big thing that we had discussed a decent amount is angular momentum. Now angular momentum is, is again very, very similar to linear momentum in the fact that it can be conserved if our system is the big thing. And a phrase that we like to say is nothing external, no changes. So if I have an object and it's doing some rotation and blah, 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 blah nothing external, no changes, it'll keep going on the same way. And angular momentum, of course, the, I think the letter that makes the most sense to represent angular momentum is L, obviously, L for, for my last name. <laughs> and then I omega, it's, it's rotation. Again, very, very similar to momentum. Right, being MV, again, these being analogously connected. So let's imagine, like, what happens if I do have a system where I have nothing external? And, you know, a common example of this uh, is what if I have some sort of rotating disc, maybe something like a merry-go-round, and I have a person that is on that, and what if this person were to walk towards the center? Now, if we think about this, no matter what, uh, what has to happen is the angular momentum has to be conserved. I have to get conservation of angular momentum because there's nothing external acting on my systems at all. So I need to sort of keep that there. But if we think about the person being very far out, if this disk is rotating around its center, that's a very, very large rotational inertia because the mass is very far away. And that's probably going to mean we're going to have a small omega. But as they move in towards the center, what I'm actually going to get um, is I'm going to get now a very, very tiny rotational inertia because the mass is getting very, very close, and that's going to cause ro the ro angular speed to get a lot bigger. We've also seen this, uh, and we call it the ice skater trick, right? If I have an ice skater, and they're spinning, and they have their arms out, and they're spinning at a given rate, they pull their arms in, and now all of a sudden they spin faster and faster and faster and faster, right? And, and foundationally, that's because we're having conservation of angular momentum. But what if I want to talk about just the boy or just the disc? And I don't want to talk about the world and the system. And this is where we get the idea that we get impulse again. And angular momentum can change. And if angular momentum is changing, it would be I change in omega. Because again, hope and mass isn't changing. Although the location could change. Uh, and from this, we, we brought back our good friend, uh, if you remember, from impulse momentum, we were to talk about fat mav, but now uh, we're going to talk about not fat mav, but tatiao, tatiao. All right, uh, and we can use this in the same way we would use fat mav, where if I have one singular object. Because we, if we think about you know some scenario where where things are colliding or where things are rotating, one of the objects has to be gaining and one of the objects has to be losing. It, it's it's 
you know, foundationally how it's going. Um, so we can use Taddy out to sort of sort of get in there uh, and and help us with with those sort of things. Again, just like energy, just like momentum, just like the other forces, we're saying nothing external, no changes, uh, and we can do there now. One one last thing to bring up uh, would be that we now have something called K-Rot, rotational kinetic energy, uh, very similar to the kinetic energy equation, right, in, in form, but different in that it means now stuff is rotating. Big thing to watch out for rotation is when stuff rotates, there has to be friction for something to rotate because if you put a ball on a ramp and there's no friction, it's just going to slide. But that friction will not generate heat. That friction just provides enough grip so the object can actually roll over itself to get k rot. And problems and examples we could see this is if I have you know some sort of ramp, and at the top I have a block, and then I have an identical ramp, and at the top I have a ball. And let's say that this one uh, is super super smooth, right? And then this one there's just enough friction to make it roll, but not enough friction to generate heat. Why this is so important to us is because they would both start with the same amount of UGG. They would both start with the same amount of gravitational potential. But when the block got to the bottom, it would all be linear or translational kinetic energy. But when the ball gets to the bottom, it's going to be, yeah, linear tr uh, translational kinetic energy, but it's also going to be K-Rod. So because in the first scenario, all the UGG becomes kinetic. And in the second scenario, all that UGG is now shared between translational and rotational kinetic, the ball will actually be moving slower than the block. And this is uh, an easy example uh, of how we can bring K-Rot and how rotational motion sort of uh, throws a wrench in. Get it? Because like wrench, torque, you know, like force, torque. Cool. K-Rot, rotational motion, remember Rotmo in general, we're just taking stuff we've already learned and adding new letters with a few minor details. And those minor details that are changing really are torque uh, and angular momentum. All right, uh, smash that like and subscribe wherever on earth they are. Because I don't know. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching.